time for Brief Applause, featuring stories from the WVIZ PBS Emmy Award winning arts and culture program Applause, with your host, Dee Perry. Artist Neil Hamilton just might be the true definition of the modern day Renaissance man. When he's not shooting pics as staff photographer for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and Museum, he plays in a band. And when he's not performing on stage, he paints. As you're about to see, that versatility was crucial when tragedy struck this man for all seasons. You might even say it helped him paint a new picture of his life. It was 10 years of, I mean, the most fabulous moments. I mean, like I said, we still don't realize how exciting this is until you really sit and talk to, some, you know, talk to somebody about it. You know, it's a job right now. We do our job and move on and keep going to the next and the next. But then when I start, like I said, when I pull out the logbook and the dates and the times and what really happened, then you go, wow, that was really big. I work about with just about everybody. The person to me that was the most fun was actually Little Richard because this guy is just hilarious and he's fast and he's witty. And I remember when he performed at the Rock Hall and I'm down in the front taking his pictures. And I'm supposed to be seen but not seen. And that's how I do my job. And he actually stopped the concert in the middle of the song to talk to me. And I thought, oh my God, he called me out. And he, I did something wrong. And I got, you know, how you feel like you're this small and the whole crowd's looking at you. And the spotlight comes down. And I thought, oh, this is not good. And then he just asked me, what kind of camera is that? I told him what it was. And he says, make sure you get my good side. And he blazed right back into the song. It was a perfect little moment. Put me down for somebody else. Down the house. Ah. So the anniversary was actually um, this Monday, or Tuesday, November 1st, was the day two years ago it happened. And it was one of those typical cold nights, you know, that you just say, okay, winter's coming in, it's setting in, let's go get some firewood and light the, the old fireplace up. And that's all it was. And, you know, a normal night of fire, and I'm very careful with that. And I always extinguish it in the whole routine when it's done. Something told me to stay awake. And then when I walked back in the house, the whole floor was burning from the basement up. I guess a hot cinder had fallen out of a crack in the chimney and hit the rafters in the basement. But I went down in the basement, smoked fire, couldn't see, couldn't breathe, and I'm trying to put out a fire. And then it finally dawned on me, I think you need to hit 911 here, <laughs> you know, and, and get them in there. But then they came in, and, and it was, they got it out pretty fast. But then what happened, the bad part about it is they said it was okay, and we, and we went away. And the next thing you know, our neighbors are calling and saying it restarted, and this time it really did some damage. Things got really destroyed the second round here. And um, that was... I mean, that's a shocking thing. You know, it just hits you. Just like right now, I know what these people are going through with the Katrina thing and the, the hurricanes. When you lose everything, it just, you just don't even know what to think or feel yet. Probably three months after being here and realizing that this is a reality and it must be dealt with, I got frustrated one day and I had a blank canvas laying around and I had an idea. I didn't have the tools I used to have. It's kind of funny. I think God just said, you know what? We're going to take everything away. Now let's see what you're going to do. And I think that was a true test. So what happened was then, I didn't have the stuff, so I looked around and I found remnants of house paints. I found putty knives and tools and sponges and just anything I could get my hands on. And I started to think and use all the talents and things I knew. And I said, I can, I can still compose. I'm alive. still have all my parts, you know. And I started to paint in this different way. Never tried it. This was, I never experimented. I went straight to a painting. Sting was actually the first painting I did using this technique. And, and I was quite pleased with the results. Then I said, you know what? I, there's something happening here. And then I couldn't wait to, to start the second one. I had to do Bootsy because he's so flamboyant, you know, with his glasses and his sparkle and his diamonds and his big hat. I said, I got to do this because it's just, it's, just, it's just there. I don't know if everybody knows Bootsy, but actually the Funkadelics was actually the first concert I went to as a teenager. Well, the men come in these places. We all know Tina for, you know, her explosive performances. But when I got to work with her once, uh, here's the part that really throws you. Tina is the most meekest, mildest, shyest, quietest person. You cannot connect the two. So I wanted to catch a, a capture a very soft, 
and you know, loving side of her, and that's what I did in the painting. And, and right away, you feel it. I had to stop to do Robert because Robert's like a father figure to me, and and I've spent many you know moments and and time photographing him in concert. Here's a man that's over 90 years old, still playing all over the world, and I and I find that just to be just marvelous you know so I love to sit with people who are wise you know and they can tell you things and I listen I'm like what do you think Robert he's the one that actually got me back to playing you know my instrument again because I took a taken a long break from it and, and I would give him this little sob story and he would just say so what's the problem what's the problem pick it up and play I was playing with the Rock and Roll All-Stars, which we played for a while. There were some people from the Rock Hall and some other pickup musicians around town that were pretty good. And we, we were out there for about three or four years, and we had a good time. I'm more of an artist. I mean, still, that's a, a, another reason why I'm back to doing this, because that's my first calling. That's what I was first. Photography came in as a secondary. I mean, both tools are very helpful, and I'm glad I can bounce back and forth with them. I mean, photography, like I said, it's its own science, but art is something that's coming truly from my, you know, from my heart and soul. Because it's kind of kind of weird to be able to go off in all these different directions. You know, most people spend their life focusing on one profession and they do well with it. And me, it's like, I don't know, I don't know if it's a curse or not. It's like you can go in different directions. You start to, either that dilutes things, you know, or, or, or like you said, does it all converge somewhere? I think it's going to converge because I feel good about it, and, and maybe this is all part of, my life coming full circle again, you know, where I've taken all these little, these little segments of my life and now forced them together. And I think they all fit, like you said, they all still tie into the same world. So if I can sit with the right people and come up with some great way of putting it all together and displaying it, because, I mean, I really want other people to experience this too and be able to say, wow, all this happened and this, you know, this, this man was able to put this together as a visual you know, that people can really walk away and say, wow, we really got something out of that. For more stories on Northeast Ohio's rich and vibrant cultural community, tune into Applause with Dee Perry, Thursday nights at 7.30 on WBIZ-PBS. Be sure to join D4 around noon, weekdays at noon on 90.3 WCPN, shining the spotlight on our local arts and culture scene.